Hi, Curtis in Seattle. I thought I'd take a quick trip out to the FUBAR tractor factory and see how the cooling system is doing. My neighbors made me this snowman the other day. Still holding in there. This is the second day I haven't had to shovel the walkway here. Still a little slippery, icy in spots. Just came into the FUBAR tractor factory. My brother made me this sign. And we all know what FUBAR means, right? It's fouled up beyond all recognition. Or maybe a four-letter word in there. I finally got a movie that I'm going to be able to put on that reel there, that blank reel. So it looks like it's idle right now, and it still says night because I just turned the lights on. But the battery's 44 degrees, and the ground is 45 degrees, so it's really close. Inside temperature's 44, outside is 35. It's been running in freeze mode now for days and days because of the weather here. This is a diagram of the shop cooling system. There's five 55 gallon drums for a total of 275 gallons buried about a foot underground. There's four temp sensors. There's a temp sensor that's inside the first barrel measuring the water temperature. There's a temp sensor, sensor outside the first barrel, about a foot outside the barrel that measures the ground temperature. There's an outside temp sensor. There's an inside temp sensor. There's a pump, a three-way valve, course the Arduino controller, there's a fill valve, and then there's a perch valve here. The system runs with, it brings in water from the first barrel through this dip tube, and then up through the wall to the pump, either runs it through this radiator or that radiator, and then it returns to the system, goes through the wall, underground to the first barrel, it sprays into the top of the barrel, it pulls in water from the dip tube here, and it's, they're all daisy chained together like that. The, um, as I said, one of the problems I had was that I had these barrels, um, they were domed up when I was filling the system and I was purging water through the upper valve here and I found out that I had nine feet ahead and uh, that created a lot of pressure on these, on these barrels. So what I did is I hooked a hose up here that was full of water and it acts as a siphon and I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's dropped the water pressure down to somewhere around here zero because the, the barrels weren't domed up nearly as high uh, right before I filled them. So I think I've taken care of that problem. And uh, the only other problem that I have is that by not having any, any way to purge the air out of the system every now and then when the pump comes on I hear just a little tiny little bit of cavitation but it doesn't seem to affect it. So I haven't dealt with it at this point. Well, I've finally plotted some of the data. Um, uh, forgive me for this, this chart being so busy. I'll try to go through it as best I can and clear things up. This is June 15th through June 30th of 2021. And I picked this time frame because on the 15th of June down here, the temperatures were fairly normal. This, amber color here is the outside air temperature and then by June 28th we had record setting heat wave in the area that was 106 degrees and then shortly after that it started to to come back down this gray trace right here is the inside air temp again this amber is the outside air temp the battery there's the legend up here the battery is this light blue the ground temperature is this brown which is this here the arm and disarm trace is basically a digital rep representation from whether the system is armed or whether it's disarmed. And then the shop lights, they're either on or off. And in this green representation here, the shop lights are off. And here it shows they're on. So you'll see that I turn them on and then off and then back on and so forth. And then the last trace, the system mode, shows whether the system is in cooling mode, idle, or recharge. The, the numbers down here are the days of the, the month in June. And then on the left, you'll see the degrees in Fahrenheit. The upper 
temperature is 110 degrees, lower temperature is 50. Um, the trace here at 71 degrees is what the threshold is for the cooling system to come on in my shop. That's a pretty comfortable temperature. Um, these numbers here represent some close-ups of plots that I'll show you in a minute. And I wanted to see kind of what was going on with the, the battery temperature and then also the inside temperatures. There was some interesting um, changes here along with uh, the plot number two. This is very interesting. I wanted to see what this looked like and then plot number three because it was the hottest day of the year and uh, see what was happening with the battery temperature along with the inside temperature. So now we'll take a look at plot number one and then after that two and then three. Here's plot number one which is June 21st um, from basically 12 a.m. in the morning at this is zero hundred hours military time all the way to 2400 hours which is midnight. Uh, this plot uses points that are every three minutes of the day from 12 a.m. all the way through to 1159 p.m. on the 21st. Again, here's the threshold for the cooling system to come on. Uh, this is the outside temperature, inside temperature, water barrel temperature, ground temperature, and then the status of the system, idle cooling. Uh, in this case, it didn't go on to recharge at all because the uh, temperature of the of the, outs the outside temperature never was lower than the water barrel temperature, the battery, so it could never recharge. And then, of course, here's the lights I came on came out in the shop about 8.30 in the morning and left the lights on until about 5.20 in the afternoon. And the system did what it was supposed to. It cycled on and off and kept the shop fairly comfortable until about this point when it looks like it started to, to kind of run away. And that's when I shut it off. I went inside. So how much did it really cool the shop? I think from this graph, you can pretty much see that it it probably would have continued to increase here up to somewhere about here and then leveled off. So all of this is cooling. It's not a tremendous amount, but it's um, two or three, maybe up to five degrees here, effectiveness. So that's, um, that's pretty good in my book. This is plot number two for June 25th. Again, the scale on the, on the left side over here is the same, 110 degrees for the high, 50 for the low. And then all the system status, um, all the plots are, the colors are the same. Here's the outside air temperature and then the battery temperature. You'll notice that it was idle uh, in the early morning and then it went into recharge mode. And the reason why it went into recharge mode is because the battery temperature was higher than the outside air temperature. So for this length of time right here, it was in recharge mode. Did it, was it effective? Not really. I think it maybe only lowered the battery by a degree, if that. Maybe not even that. As you can see, it looks like even over here that the battery temperature went down to uh, probably just from the ground. But um, what I've noticed is that if, if the outside air temperature is like five degrees or more, you can really get some, some movement inside the, the battery. But in this case, it didn't get any. Over here, the cooling system came on, and uh, the reason why it came on here is because I turned the lights on. It was already above the 71 degree threshold, but the system uh, wasn't um, armed to come on because I didn't have the lights on. So when it did come on, it looks like it lowered the temperature uh, about four degrees and then held it there. And then of course, as we get into the afternoon sun, it always looks like it starts to run away and uh, the, the uh, battery temperature came up here as well. Um, so looking at this plot, what kind of effectiveness did we get out of it? And I think I could probably say that it would be somewhere in this, this area here. So this is the cooling that I got out of the system. Here's plot number three. This is two days, June 28th through June 29th. And uh, this is the hottest day record that we've had ever in the Seattle area, I believe. Um, it's set, it's the all time high record. And you'll see it's 107 degrees. Um, 
I thought I'd go ahead and show this just to see what the system did. And so what I did was I, I had it disarmed in the, on the 27th just um, to make sure that it didn't come on. I wanted to see how well it would do. And you can see that the water temperature in the barrels was pretty much the same as the ground temperature, so 61 degrees. And then I, I armed the system and I turned the lights on at six o'clock in the morning and the outside air temp or the inside air temperature was always already above the 71 degree threshold so the system immediately came on and stayed on until I turned the lights off and you'll see that it it probably cooled a little bit but I'm still above my 71 degree threshold and really what I did was I just heated the water up in the barrels um, and at the same time that I was doing that, I was starting to drag the ground temperature along with it. Uh, interestingly enough, that because the water temperatures in the barrels uh, went up so high that as soon as it reached this point right here, the outside air temperature was lower than the, the water barrel temperature, and so it went into recharge mode, uh, even though we're like close to 70 degrees outside. Um, and it looks like it might have drug it down just a little bit here. It's hard to, it's hard to say. I would say that it probably did. So drug the temperature down a little bit, and then of course the recharge shut off, and then it looks like it started to go back up because it was 7 a.m. the next morning, and it was back into cooling mode, and it ran until I shut the lights off. It uh, looks like about. What is that, four o'clock in the afternoon? Um, so how much effectiveness did I get out of it here in cooling the shop? I'm gonna say it wasn't very effective, but probably somewhere in, in this neighborhood, maybe. And then over here, um, maybe even just a little bit better. I don't know, it's hard to say. But so in this case, it really wasn't too effective, but I did get some shop cooling. However, still well above my 71 degree threshold. And I said shop temperature never exceeded 80, 83 degrees inside, even though it was 107 outside. So it wasn't too bad. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate um, all the comments I've gotten on the system so far, and uh, I'm glad that I, you were able to uh, see the system diagram as well as the plots of the data that plotting the data was a, a little bit cumbersome because there's just so many points but uh, I think I'll leave you with whether you think this system is uh, marginally effective or just effective thanks again take care bye